Uh-oh, Allie was missing for days when her husband Orson called the police to report it. Detective Wells arrived at the scene and found her purse buried in the garden. Inside, there was a note that read, It's a sign. You're mine. I redesign your new life. The police had three suspects with unusual names. Orson, her husband, Ryan, her best friend, and Atlas, her brother. Who took Allie? It was Rhyme. Almost all the words in the note rhyme with his name. While driving in a storm, John saw three people standing in the rain at the bus stop. But he only had one seat available in his car. Who gets the ride? His childhood friend, an old lady that looks like she's freezing, or his wife? John asked his childhood friend to drive the old lady to the hospital and then take the car back to his house. And John himself will wait for the bus with his wife. Mark is locked in a 30-foot tall cell with an earthen floor and a window near the ceiling. There's nothing else in his room but a shovel and a bed. The entrance is blocked with concrete. How can he get out? Mark can shovel the soil to the wall underneath the window and climb out. Detective Jones was called one day by Border Control about a suspicious pickup truck. Every day, the vehicle went back and forth between two countries with a large sack in the back of its truck bed. When the detective opened the sack, it was filled with sand. What was the driver smuggling? trucks. A geography teacher vanished on the first day of school. When the police arrived, they suspected four people who claimed to have alibis. The landscaper was mowing the front lawn. The English teacher was giving students a surprise test. The principal was preparing for his welcoming speech. And the coach was meeting new students who wanted to join the football team. Who was lying? The English teacher. Of course! (laughs) Students don't get surprise tests on the first day. Well, maybe not at this school. (laughs) A crazy scientist took 10 people into his lab to check their intelligence. He gave everyone two pills and a glass of water. He told them, one pill is a placebo and the other is poison. Whichever you take, I'll take. But somehow, everyone ended up unconscious after the trial except for the scientist. How did he do it? Both pills were placebo. The poison was in the water. Shane and Mia went to Japan for their honeymoon. Only Shane came back, and Mia's family called the best detective in town. What should be the detective's first move? Inspect Shane's suitcase. Inspect Shane's house. Call the travel agency Shane and Mia used. Call the agency to see how many return tickets Shane had booked. He's a suspect, and he shouldn't know the police are investigating him to avoid losing the evidence. Someone knocked on Amy's hotel room door. When she opened it, she saw a mysterious man. He apologized and said he'd mistaken Amy's room for his. When he left, Amy called the police. Why? Nobody knocks on the door of their own room. This is a technique used by people who want to break into someone's home. A worker was found unconscious near the entrance of an abandoned building. He has no memory of what happened, but seems to have fallen from the building. Detective Marks is assigned to this case, 
and he must figure out whether the worker fell or was pushed. He goes to the first floor, opens the window, and throws out a small rock. He does the same on the second floor and all the way to the top. When the detective comes back down, he's sure the worker was pushed. How does he know? He had to open the windows on all floors to throw out rocks. This was an abandoned building, and someone closed the window right after pushing the worker. James ordered a coffee from his local bakery, put in some sugar, but then noticed a fly in his cup. He told the staff member, and they took back the coffee and brought him a new one. But when he got a sip, he got angry. Why? His new coffee was already sweetened. The staff member only removed the fly. Tom was walking in a snowy park at 10 p.m. when he got attacked from behind. He didn't see who knocked him out, and he immediately went to the police. The detectives questioned four suspects. Adam said he was at a suit fitting for his dinner later. Daniel said he was hosting a party at his place. Susan said she was working out before going to work. And Luke said he went to the park to get some cool photos of flying birds. One of them is lying. Who? It's Luke. It's next to impossible to see birds at night in winter. Right before the final soccer match, the team's goalkeeper went missing. The police arrived and they had three suspects from the rival team. Mike said he was signing autographs for his friends. Jake said he had broken his ankle and he was getting a massage. John was training at the gym before the match. The police immediately knew who did it. It was Jake. You don't get a massage when you break your ankle. A doctor walked into an unconscious patient's ward. There, he saw a nurse buttoning up her shirt. As soon as she noticed him, she exclaimed, It's not what you think! The nurse isn't lying, but why was her shirt unbuttoned in the first place? She got locked out of the changing room and knew that the patient was unconscious. So she went to his ward to change into her uniform. Yeah, I believe her. A group of six friends decided to check out an abandoned house in their neighborhood. When they arrived, Mark, one of the group, warned his friends not to go in. But all of them ignored him and walked in anyway. Mark stayed outside, but his friends never came out. Mm-hmm. What did he see that stopped him from going into the house? There were footprints going in, but none coming out. Detective Stevenson is taken by some of his mean supervisors who want to test his intelligence. They put him in a room with two doors. One leads to freedom while the other opens onto a bottomless pit. There are two guards, either responsible for one door. One of them always tells the truth, while the other always lies. Stevenson doesn't know who's the honest one, and he can only ask one question to one of them. What should the question be to save his life? If I ask the security guard next to you which door leads to freedom, what will he say? The honest guard will say that the liar will point to the dangerous door. The liar will point to that one too. No matter who Stevenson asks, he should pick the door neither of them will point at. Melissa is walking down a dark alley when she notices a dark figure following her. She walks into a restaurant and sits at a table. The mysterious figure does the same. Then she yawns and immediately knows she's got a stalker. How?
When she looked up, the mysterious figure was also yawning. It means they had been watching her. The director of a large company was found unconscious in his office. The police showed up, saw the messy office, and realized that a fight had gone down. They went to his secretary and asked to see the list of visitors that day. Immediately, they knew who did it. How? The last visitor was the culprit. During the fight, the wall clock also stopped because it got hit. It showed the exact time the last appointment took place. Sarah wanted to get some money from her brother for a house. She couldn't tell him the truth and asked him for an expensive gift. After a week, her brother gave her a glamorous tiara. Then she went to her second brother, asked for money, but he gave her jewelry. Still, she's got both money and jewelry. How is it possible? She asked for a similar jewelry item and sold one of them. Susie went on a dating website and found three guys that she liked, all with some very impressive backgrounds. But only one of them is telling the truth. Can you guess which one? Shane said he was an astronaut. He went to Mars and enjoyed a beautiful sunset. Chris said he was a scientist and went to the North Pole. He enjoyed being on floating ice and seeing both arctic foxes and penguins. Dylan said he was a pilot, and once he flew his helicopter so fast, he broke the sound barrier. Shane is telling the truth. The sunset on Mars is blue. There are no penguins in the North Pole, and helicopters can't travel faster than the speed of sound. Oh, and yes, we'll also ignore the fact that no one's been to Mars yet. Susie also thinks Shane has beautiful eyes, so who are we to disrupt this love connection? Kim and Ashley are best friends. They decided to spend summer vacation in Italy together. They were very lucky to buy cheap plane tickets. Their flight was at 10 a.m. Unfortunately, when the girls arrived at the airport, they realized it was the wrong one. Now they have two options. Take a high-speed train for 100 bucks to go to the right airport, or stay here and buy tickets for a later flight for $400. What should they choose? The second option. Look at the clock on the wall. It's 9.55 a.m. The boarding for their flight is already over. They won't make it even if they take the high-speed train. Kim and Ashley bought new tickets. They went to the airport restaurant to drink coffee. But one weird detail scared Kim away. She suggested they should leave that place as soon as possible. What did Kim see? This woman over there is a zombie. Wow, how did she get through security? When it was finally time to board the plane, it turned out there were no more economy class seats left. Kim and Ashley were offered to fly in business class. There, the girls saw three people. When the flight attendant served them fresh juice, she whispered that Kim and Ashley were extremely lucky. They were about to travel next to a famous Italian billionaire. Can you guess which of these passengers is the billionaire? This glamorous lady is a good candidate, but it's very unlikely a billionaire will wear a 100% polyester coat. This guy's business suit is very elegant, but look at his shoes. They seem quite cheap and worn out. This funny gentleman must be the real billionaire. Although his outfit is rather casual, his gold watch looks very expensive. The glamorous lady began to chat with Kim and Ashley. She told them she had recently visited an exotic island with her friends. Then she showed the girls some pictures. When the lady went to the bathroom, Ashley whispered to Kim, This woman is a liar. She photoshopped this picture. How did Ashley know that? It's all about the shadows. They all look natural, except for this one. The glamorous lady took a sip of her juice and started coughing. 
Suddenly, she fainted and fell into the billionaire's arms. He was ready to shout for help, but Kim stopped him, saying the woman was faking it. How did she know that? Look at the content of her bag. It's full of the billionaire's pictures and magazine articles. She also has a tattoo with his portrait on her leg. This woman is obsessed with him. It was lunchtime, and the billionaire offered Kim to play a game. There were three boxes. One of them contained a meal. There was a statement on each box, but only one of them was true. Can you help Kim figure out which box has food inside? If the food is in the first box, there are two true statements. And if the food is in the third box, there are also two true statements. But we need just one true statement. That's why the food can only be in the second box. Kim opened the box. She saw a delicious meal and a bank card. The billionaire said, congratulations, you've won $5 million. Enjoy your trip. Kim and Ashley landed in Rome and went to get their luggage. It turned out that Ashley had had the same suitcase as two other passengers, and they had a little quarrel. Can you help distribute the three suitcases among these people? The first suitcase belongs to this woman. It's covered in her dog's hair. The second suitcase has some traces of a star sticker. You've probably noticed it before on Ashley's bag. And the third suitcase belongs to this man. Since Kim and Ashley were now very rich, they decided to find a real estate agent who could help them rent a luxurious villa. They wanted to spend their vacation there. The agent showed them three houses. Can you help the girls choose the best one? There are cockroaches in the first house. Mm, They won't make very pleasant neighbors. The second house is too old. There's a crack in the wall, which doesn't look safe. And the third house looks pretty good. As for the pool, it can be easily cleaned. Yes! Kim and Ashley left the villa and went sightseeing. When they returned, they found out that someone had stolen their passports from the safe. The girls called the police, and they interrogated three suspects. The chef was too busy making dinner for Kim and Ashley. The cleaner was dealing with the pool all day. And the gardener said he had been outside planting flowers. He didn't notice anything suspicious. Who's lying? the gardener. If he planted the flowers, where are they? The police returned Kim and Ashley their passports and arrested the gardener. The next day, the girls went shopping. Sellers wanted to take advantage of rich and naive tourists and offered them overpriced souvenirs. Only one of these three items is a good deal. Can you guess which one? Take a look at this Venetian mask. It says made in China, which means that this mask can't be real. This magnet is of very low quality. The word Italy is spelled with an error. It simply can't cost $100. This blue cheese doesn't look fresh, but it's normal for this kind of product. This delicacy is the only thing that Kim and Ashley can buy here for a fair price. The ladies went to the local museum and got lost in its corridors. They found a strange basement with three doors. There was a time portal to the Middle Ages behind the first door. Behind the second door, there was an evil mummy. It cursed anyone who bothered it. Finally, the third door was protected with a laser alarm system. It cut through anything that touched the laser beams. Which door should the girls choose? The second one. The mummy is sleeping peacefully inside its sarcophagus. If Kim and Ashley are quiet and don't come close, they can just walk by it. When the girls got outside, they saw a crowd of reporters around the museum. Someone has stolen the most expensive painting. The police questioned three suspects. Giovanni, the cleaner, said he had been washing the bathroom when the theft happened. Hmm. Luca, the museum guide, saw a suspicious woman with a large folder not far from the crime scene. And Bianca, the suspicious woman, was just drawing sketches as part of her art school homework. Who's lying? Luca. He has a rolled canvas under his shirt. Kim and Ashley came to a restaurant to enjoy the local cuisine. 
but they noticed a vampire among the visitors. So the girls decided to leave. Which visitor is the vampire? This elderly lady is wearing sunglasses in the evening. Also, she doesn't have a shadow. Then Kim and Ashley took a boat trip. A local photographer took their picture and printed it on two similar t-shirts. Then he offered the girls to buy these souvenirs. But Kim noticed three differences between these pictures. Can you see them too? Here they are! The ladies came to a bakery. Kim ordered a salad and coffee, while Ashley wanted to eat something sweet. The barista offered her three remaining options. Help Ashley make the right choice. Someone has already tasted this cupcake. Ants live inside this donut. It's probably not very fresh. But this croissant is safe. The green color is pistachio glaze, not mold. In the evening, Kim and Ashley arrived at the villa. The owner was there, and he was furious. He hadn't received any rental payment because Kim and Ashley's card presented by the billionaire was blocked. Suddenly, they heard breaking news on TV. Some scammers had robbed the billionaire. All his accounts were empty. Three people commented on the situation. The billionaire's driver said his boss had many enemies. The billionaire's girlfriend complained that now she couldn't even afford a new haircut. And his PA said they would try to return the money soon. Ashley knew for sure that one of them was hiding something. But who? The girlfriend. If she had no money, how come she left the boutique with so many purchases? The owner of the villa offered Kim and Ashley a deal. If you manage to prepare my favorite cocktail, I'll forget about your debt. The girls had no choice, so they agreed. The man gave them the recipe, but the last ingredient was coded. Can you guess what ingredient it is? If you mix blue and yellow, you'll get green. So the ingredient must be green grapes. Next morning, Kim and Ashley woke up locked in a room with two doors as the only exit. If they chose the wrong door, they would stay in the room forever. And if they picked the correct door, they would end up with loads of jewelry, money, and designer clothing that would be enough for the rest of their lives. Two guards were standing in front of them. One guard always lied, while the other always told the truth. Kim and Ashley didn't know their identities. The girls could only ask one question. What should they ask? The question should be, if I asked the other guard which door leads to the treasures, what would he say? If they asked the guard who always tells the truth, he would say that the other guard would point to the wrong door. And if they asked the liar, he would point to the wrong door too. In either case, both guards would point to the wrong door. So Kim and Ashley should just choose the other door. A super wealthy businessman, Mr. Carl Jenkins, has been taken and left locked up all alone in a dark room. His phone's almost run out of charge, so he can only write one message. He knows that someone might spy on his phone, so he decided to write a message with a code to a high school friend, John Smith, who runs a detective agency. He remembered that in high school, they would cipher messages to each other, so he used the same technique. The message was this. Can you guess what it means? Back in high school, they would shift one letter to the right each time they needed to write a secret code. To decipher it, you need to go one letter to the left. Their alphabet looks like this. The message is, it was Eric. Having read the message, John knew immediately who his friend was talking about. Eric is the financial director of Carl's company. He had seen him once at a party a couple of years ago, so he knew what he looked like. John decided to investigate this case himself and help his friend out. He was sure there was something secret in Carl's mansion. Somehow, he thought he knew that Eric would have the key to the mansion. The receptionist, Kelly, 
said he would always have lunch with different business partners at 2 p.m. sharp in his favorite cafe. When the detective drove up to the cafe, he saw Eric, the man with a beard, discussing business with someone. Either of them had a briefcase next to them, and the briefcases looked similar to each other. John was waiting for Eric and the second guy to leave the cafe. They went to the car, got in, and left both briefcases on the back seat. The detective followed them. They left the car in a parking lot, and luckily, they were careless enough to leave the car open. Which briefcase should the detective grab? The one that looks brand new. While they were walking to the car, the detective spotted a few scratches on the second man's briefcase. Both briefcases were locked with a cipher. Not to make the whole thing suspicious, the detective decided not to take it and cracked the code right in the car. Can you help him open the briefcase? The code is 000. The briefcase is brand new, and Eric probably didn't have time to set a code on it yet. Plus, Eric's the one who leaves the car open and unattended in a parking lot. So, no wonder he uses a default code for his briefcase. Now that the detective has the key, he heads to the mansion. The front door isn't a problem with the key in hand. The study is upstairs. He's been there before, so he remembers the stairs leading up have a secret. If you step on the wrong stair, you'll instantly fall to the basement and won't be able to escape from it yourself. What step should John mind? It's the one with the slit in the middle. When you step on it, it opens, and you get into a dark room with bats and spiders. Yikes! Alright, John is finally at the study door, and Carl would always use buttons to open it. You've got only one try. There are three buttons, yellow, green, and blue. Which one should the detective choose if he knows that Carl is a big fan of painting? A combination of blue and yellow gives green, so the door opens. Green light for our detective. He finally reaches the safe with top-secret documents that could help him find out the truth. Obviously, just like any other safe, it's locked with a code. It also has a warning. You can enter the code only once. If you hit the wrong code, the safe locks up forever. He's looking around for a hint, and voila, John is right. On the desk, he sees a note. It says, secret code, and has a combination of three digits. Three, something, and one. The digit in the middle can't be seen since there's an ink stain right on it. Can you crack the code with one attempt only? The code is 371. The detective thought the code was used frequently, so the button must have been a bit worn out. He was right. Since he knew the beginning and the end, he only needed to find one more worn button. Alright, now he's got the top secret documents he needed for his investigation. He looks through all the papers and finally finds something that looks like the document he actually needed. To take it as a hard proof, he needs to find one which is not fake. There are four copies, they look almost the same, but only one is real. Can you guess which one? It's the one in the upper left corner. It has a stamp, a signature, and it says agreement. The one next to it looks the same, but it has a spelling mistake. It says agreement. Other copies lack either a stamp or a signature. So the detective takes a closer look at this agreement and sees something about a painting bought in an auction. He suddenly understands that his friend Carl was taken so that someone could sneak into his mansion and grab that super expensive painting. 
He's looking at the wall with all the paintings Carl collected and realizes that no painting is missing. There are as many nails in the wall as there are paintings. Still, there's something strange about one of them. Can you spot what's wrong here? Even though all the paintings are present, there's one that lacks a frame. According to the agreement, the painting has been recently bought, and an art dealer helped Carl pick it. The expert was an honest man, and he helped Carl make sure all the other paintings in his collection were real. This time, the painting turned out to be nothing but a copy. Why did the expert suggest that Carl buy it? Although the painting cost nothing, its frame was a beautiful and expensive piece of art. The one who grabbed it definitely knew that. Now it's all clear. John has to find both Carl and the precious frame. He goes outside, trying to deduce where the person who took Carl went. Carl is looking at all the tracks on the ground. He needs to follow one of them to understand where to look for Carl. Where should he go? He's got to follow the tracks going to the left. There are three sets of tracks here. The first belonged to John's car. The second set belongs to a two-wheel vehicle, and since the tracks are really thin, they were left by a bike. It seems impossible to take someone somewhere on a bike, so these must belong to a mail carrier who comes every day to bring the letters. The last set of tracks definitely belongs to a large car, so John should follow it. He's lucky and there are no turns, so he's just going straight. Half an hour later, he sees something like a castle. He drives up to it and he sees three moats in front of him. Here's the first one, a row full of metal stakes. How can John jump over it safely? There's a small hot air balloon nearby. John has to untie it and light the lamp to take off. Since the next moat is on fire, John thinks it's unsafe to fly over it because the air balloon doesn't fly high enough and the lamp doesn't have enough oil to go on for long. Still, he managed to cross the moat with fire easily. How did he do it? He took the sand from the air balloon's ballast and sprinkled it on the fire, extinguishing it. The last moat was filled with scalding hot lava. It took John some time to figure out how to cross it, but he managed to do it safely. How? There were a lot of stones around him. The lava torrent wasn't deep at all, so throwing stones at it, he made a tiny path to hop on. The castle was rather small inside, so the hardest thing was to actually get into it. When he entered the hall, John saw three doors. Above the doors, there was a sign. It said, One of the doors leads to a labyrinth no one ever escaped. One of the doors is the exit. If you enter it, you'll have to cross all the three moats all over again. One of the doors has what you're looking for. When John looked at the doors, he knew immediately where his friend was. Which door did he choose? The handles were made of shiny metal, which looks cool but gathers all the fingerprints. The only door with fingerprints is the one on the left. John opens the door and sees his friend. Carl rushes out of that dark room, and while heading to the exit, they spot a few frames. Which one is Carl's? The rectangular one. The painting was rectangular, and the two other frames are square. 
The two friends get out of the castle, get in the car, and head to the police department. There, an officer's waiting for them. They have three suspects who could have possibly taken the exquisite frame. Carl and John enter the room separately. Still, they choose the same person. Who did they choose? The man on the right. Carl chooses him because it's the art expert. John chooses him because he saw him with Carl having lunch. Wow, seems like this expert's not going to work with Carl ever again. Ellis had to go to the hospital the other day. When she entered, she immediately felt something off about the place. Walking along the hall, she spotted three doctors. There was something completely wrong about one of them. Which doctor is crazy? The one on the left, he's got wolf eyes and teeth, and there's no badge on his uniform. Stay away from him, Ellis. All right, Ellis didn't listen to our piece of advice and went straight to Dr. Wolf's room. He says he needs to apply some new protective cream on her. But in fact, he just wants to test it. After covering Ellis with this magic lotion, she shouldn't have trusted him. He makes Ellis choose one of three containers to jump into. Wow, this is a weird hospital. One of them is filled with toxic waste. In the second container, there's acid that can eat through metal. The third one is filled with lava from a volcano that almost ruined a whole town a year ago. What container should Alice choose? At least this time, Alice made the right choice. She picked the container with lava. The volcano erupted a year ago, so the lava is already completely solid and cool. Okay, she nailed the first experiment, and Dr. Wolf gives Ellis a choice of three pills. He says the red one can help see the past, the blue one can help see the future, and the yellow one can help read other people's minds. Which one should Ellis choose? Ellis was smart enough this time. She randomly picked the yellow one, but she suspected it was another experiment. She gulped the water but never swallowed the pillow and still has it in her cheek. In fact, all three of them were poisoned. When the wolf went outside for a second, Ellis spat out the pill and ran away. Hey, try the urgent care clinic, Ellis. No wolf's there. Ginny was cooking dinner for her friends. When everyone was at the table, she suddenly realized there was something wrong with one of her friends. Which friend didn't like the meal? It's Mike. He secretly shared it with Jenny's dog. Everybody knows that an old witch lives in this spooky old house. Nobody really wants to meet her. Mary is in this house right now, but she seems to be alone. How come? Who said witches can't have a name Mary? She was once young and beautiful too, but then that darn spell happened. One town had a weird law that said all the men had to be cleanly shaven, but no man was allowed to shave himself. The only person who was licensed to shave them was a 40-year-old hairdresser. But who shaved the hairdresser? there was no need. The hairdresser was a woman. Allison met a stranger yesterday, and she immediately knew who he was. She hadn't seen this person before, and no one had ever described him to her. He wasn't a celebrity, and he wasn't doing anything unusual. So how come she knew who he was? The man was the twin brother of one of Allison's friends. Bill is a shoe shiner. He offers his services to passers-by for free. Still, people who accept it end up paying him of their own will. How so? Bill shines only one shoe for free. 
People don't want to look bizarre with just one clean shoe and have to pay for the shining of the other one. The king told his three daughters to place three identical kettles with the same amount of water on the fire. The king promised that the husband of the daughter, whose kettle would boil first, would become his heir. His youngest daughter's kettle boiled first. How come? While the other daughters kept lifting their kettle's lids to check if the water was already boiling, the youngest one kept it closed. Up for some math? Nah, just kidding. You'll only need your logic. Find a way to get 200 out of 188 by just using one line. Use the line to cut 188 horizontally. This way, you'll get two 100s. One person was 25 years old in 2000 and 20 years old in 2005. How is this possible? This person lived before Common Era. One man went to his friend's party and told his wife he'd be back before sunrise. He shaved and left home. He returned as promised before sunrise, but he was sporting a long, thick beard. How come? The man and his wife lived in a place with polar nights that can last for several months. A man was driving his car all the way from New York to Boston. Only at the end of the trip did he discover that one of his car's tires had been punctured from the very beginning. Still, he managed to reach his destination successfully, and his journey wasn't affected by this problem at all. How is it possible? The punctured tire was the spare one. The financial director of a big company finally persuaded new partners to sign a super important agreement. He then put this document into a folder and left it on the table in his office. When he arrived at work the next morning, the folder was gone. John gathered all the employees who were in the office at the time and questioned them. The cleaning lady said that she had been busy washing the floor and hadn't paid attention to anything around. The designer explained that he hadn't left his working place even once. What's more, being an artist, he didn't have any interest in agreement documents. The accountant admitted that he had entered John's office to have some documents signed. But once he noticed there was no one inside, he immediately left. Who took the folder with the agreement? It was the designer. John never mentioned which folder was gone. How would he know that the missing folder had an agreement inside? Eric wears either only black or only white socks. One morning, he was in a hurry, getting ready for an important meeting with new partners. Suddenly, the power goes out. The guy has 10 white and 10 black socks in his drawer, but all of them are mixed. He doesn't want to look silly at work wearing different socks. If it's completely dark in the room and Eric can't see anything, how many socks should he pull out of the drawer to get himself two matching ones? Three socks are more than enough. In a set of three socks, he's bound to have two of the same color. A hungry vampire is following you in a lonely street one dark night. Suddenly, you see a house with its door wide open and decide to hide there. The vampire can't enter your shelter since you lock the door in the nick of time, but it's waiting for you outside. However, you still have some hope. There are three doors leading out of the house. When you open the first door, there's molten lava. No thanks. The second door leads to the room with tarantulas as large as your head. Yikes! As for the third door, you can definitely hear a huge dog barking inside that room, and you're kind of afraid of it. What should you do? Ah, just wait till morning. Vampires can't stand daylight, and your pursuer will have to leave you alone. You're trapped in a room that's slowly getting filled with water coming from a faucet on the wall. 
There are no windows in the room, and the door is sealed shut. You have a mop and a big bucket. So how are you going to get yourself out of this one? Come on, just turn the faucet off. Now it's better. Jane told her boss someone had taken the document she prepared for the meeting. She added that she had noticed someone come in wearing a smart suit, gloves, and a black mask, safety first. This person also had three rings on their fingers. The boss didn't believe her. Why? She said the person was wearing gloves. Then how did she see three rings on their fingers? Jane must have simply forgotten to print those documents out. A hotel owner was visiting the construction site to see the progress. He wanted to start welcoming the guests as soon as possible and had big plans. At some point, he left his briefcase with important documents on the table. Some worker grabbed it and ran away. The hotel owner didn't see who it was, but he immediately called the police. There were three suspects. The architect said he had been talking on the phone, trying to get electricity for the site as there was none. The designer told the police he had been trying to find the best paint for the walls. The electrician explained he had been down in the basement trying to fix a burst light bulb. The detectives figure out who was lying. Can you? It was the electrician. How could he fix the burst light bulb if there was no electricity at the construction site at all? Ah, liar, liar, pants on fire. Okay, get ready. Today I'll show you different riddles, and you'll have to decide which girl is behaving least wisely, which is a nicer way of saying she's a dunderhead. You'll have 7 seconds to decide. The riddles may award 1 point, 2 points, or 3 points. So grab a piece of paper and give yourself the points each time you get it right. We'll start with the easiest questions that earn 1 point each. Autumn and Hope are going for a walk with their friends. It's 60 degrees outside. Who is dressed in the worst way? Hope. Autumn can take some of her clothes off, but Hope doesn't have anything to wear in case she feels cold. Ava and Olivia are camping in a forest. Suddenly, they encounter a bear on their trail. Ava stands still, and Olivia starts to run away. Who is in danger? Olivia! The bear might see her as prey and follow, and he's definitely faster. So it's better to keep your cool and slowly move backwards, keeping the eye contact. Haley and Savannah are making sandwiches for lunch. Who did something terribly wrong? Haley. She put rat poison in the sandwich instead of jelly. Delaney is on the road trip and stopped to make a couple of pictures. Lenore is riding a bike to a nearby city. Who isn't being smart? Delaney. She parked her car right under the sign that says parking isn't allowed. Jane and Charlotte are learning how to swim. Jane went to the lake with her little siblings, and Charlotte went to the ocean with her friends. They both jumped in the water alone. Who is in greater danger? Jane. In case she struggles, her little siblings won't be able to pull her out. McKenna and Desiree are late for school, so they're taking a shortcut. McKenna takes the way through the woods, and Desiree decides to go across a frozen lake. Who's in danger? Desiree. There are cracks on the lake surface. Ruby and Mary were enjoying their time outside when a storm started. Ruby hid in her car in the open space, and Mary kept swimming in the ocean. Who is not safe?
Mary should get out immediately. It's dangerous to touch water during a thunderstorm. It's okay to hide in a hardtop vehicle as Ruby did. Okay, easy questions are over. Next questions will give you two points each. Paige and Riley are going on a date, but they tell their parents they're practicing instead. Paige plays tennis, and Riley plays soccer. Who's the worst conspirator? Riley. She's dressed inappropriately for a soccer game. Unlike Paige, she doesn't have any change of clothes or equipment with her. Quinn and Sandra are working in a garden. Quinn was told to water the flowers, and Sandra should mow the lawn. Who's doing something wrong? Quinn. She was told to water the flowers, but she's watering the trees. Everly and Jasmine drove to a mall. Everly left her belongings in the car, and Jasmine locked her dog there while she's shopping. Who's being more stupid? Jasmine. You shouldn't leave animals or people in a closed car, especially in the hot sun. It's the wrong way to get a hot dog. Mia and Stella wanted to get a tattoo and skip their classes to get home right after school. When they get home, they immediately run into their parents. Who's going to get in trouble? Stella. Her tattoo is right on her wrist, and there's no way her parents won't notice it immediately. Hannah's best friend is teaching her ice skating, and Lily is learning to ride a bike with her older brother. After several minutes, they feel like they've got it and ride away from their supervisors very fast. Who's least careful? Lily. Hannah has the railing by her side that she can grab in case she falls. Lily will crash to the ground. Kylie and Abby are bloggers getting ready for a party. Who is missing something? Kylie. She's charging her cell phone, but the cord is unplugged. Melanie and Delilah are walking home from work late in the night. Which of the two isn't being careful? Melanie. Although she's walking in a less creepy place, there are no people around. If something happens, no one will be around to help her. Sophia and Brooke went camping in the forest. Suddenly, they notice a moose moving towards them. Who is in greater danger? Sophia, who is wearing heels and will run slower. Brooke can drop her huge backpack and use it as an obstacle. Kira and Ava want to go to a party, but their parents banned them from leaving the house. Kira decided to sneak out using the attic window, while Ava used the back door. Who won't make it to the party tonight? Ava. Kira is quite risky, but Ava's dad is reading a newspaper in the backyard. Maya and Chloe went for a walk. Maya went to a forest and stopped to take selfies with a friendly squirrel she met. Chloe went hiking and decided to take a selfie on the cliff. Who is in danger? Maya. The branch above her is about to fall. Maeve and Sarah are cheating on their math test. Who is more likely to be caught? Sarah. Although she's sitting in the back, the teacher's looking right at her. Bella and Ashley came home from a party, which they told their parents would be a study date. Who's going to be grounded till the end of the month?
Bella. She'll have a hard time coming up with a logical explanation for the confetti in her hair. Elizabeth and Kate are late for work, so they're driving above the speed limit. Which of them is in greater danger? Kate. She has many objects lying scattered in her car. In case of an accident, they may hit her. Ariana and Serena have to do their house chores before they'll be allowed to go to the birthday party. Who is going to be late? Ariana, the iron isn't plugged in. Since she's distracted with the TV, it might take her a while to notice. And finally, here are the hardest questions that award 3 points each. Jessica and Margo are jaywalking. Jessica is listening to music, and Margo is texting her friend. Who is in greater danger? Jessica. Although they're both behaving poorly, Margo is on a straight road where she can be noticed. Jessica is jaywalking before the road takes a turn. Someone might not have enough time to react and stop. Julia and Nea are taking a vacation to the jungles. Julia got tangled up in lianas. And Nea got stuck in quicksand. Who's in danger? Juliet. She can't get out, and there's a jaguar approaching her. Nea is relatively fine because it's actually difficult to sink in quicksand. Leah and her friend Caleb went camping. Caleb was bitten by a snake, and Leah is sucking the venom out of his leg. Amelia is on the trip as well, and there's a black widow on her neck. Who is in danger? Leah. It's dangerous to suck out the venom. As for Amelia, black widows rarely bite, and the bites are rarely fatal. Becky and Allison are both in a bathtub doing their morning routine. Becky is using the hairdryer. Allison is charging her phone while scrolling through the internet. Who is less clever? Allison. It's dangerous enough to have a socket close to the water, but Allison is charging her phone. Becky is sitting in the empty bathtub. She might be a little weird, but at least she's safe. Evelyn and Grace are on vacation. Evelyn is spending it in a desert, and Grace is in the wilderness. By the end of the day, they get tired and decide to spend the night where they are. Who's making a huge mistake? Evelyn. Night temperature in the desert can fall to 25 degrees Fahrenheit and she'll be freezing. Grace's fire will scare away wild animals. Emma and Avery are planning to go to the movies with their friends tonight. Meanwhile, they're enjoying a hot summer day. Who's not going to make it to the movies? Avery. She's about to cook the meat that has been standing in the sun for a while. In the evening, she'll get food poisoning. Scarlett and Emily are sitting on a beach in a city center. Scarlett is applying makeup, and Emily is texting her friends. Who is more likely to be robbed? Emily. Although they're both distracted, at least Scarlett has a mirror in her hands and can see if someone is approaching her. Ella and Madison are driving to their friend's birthday party. Ella is chatting on the phone with her boyfriend, while Madison is applying lipstick. Who is in greater danger? Madison. Although they both shouldn't be distracted while driving, Madison isn't wearing a seatbelt. Now, sum up your points. If you got less than 25 points, you scored below average. But, but don't be sad. Check out some of our other riddles to train. 
If you've got between 26 and 40 points, you have an average score and you're on the right track. If you scored between 41 and 55, you're above average. And if you scored 56 or more, you must be a second Einstein, uh, relatively speaking. <laughs>